Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. To our first uh, Good morning. web development special interest group. Um, I'm Lucas, the uh, web developer for Bywater Solutions. Um, do you want to go around and get an introduction from everybody? Sure. Uh, I'm Lizette Shear. I'm the president of Kohai US and I do systems for Leetal County Library District. I'm Jason Rob. I'm the secretary for Kohai US and I am the Seek and Find coordinator at the Southeast Kansas Library System. I am Margaret Haid. I am a support lead with Bywater Solutions, and I'm always giving Lucas too many web development tickets. We need to work on that. <laughs> Holly in the chat said, hi, I'm Holly. I am systems librarian for Interleaf Technology in Interleaf, Dublin. Um, so perhaps I'll start by uh, shamelessly plugging um, my plugin, Galadriel, um, which has a new version um, as of last week, which is uh, let's see. in the version number. It's 1.053, um, which now includes uh, a, a nice way to um, highlight your online resources um, in the in the search results both the results and the detail page to style that button, um, move it around a little bit, uh, change the text, change the text depending on um, uh, where the online resource is coming from. Um, so uh, check that out, it's, it's pretty cool. There's a, there's a Bywater blog post as well. Um, And um, I guess I would ask you guys, um, does, does anybody use that, that plugin? Yeah, we have it. I okay. think you got us set up with it when we did that big overhaul of our OPEC. Right. Um, like a year and a half ago. Okay, so I, I in, in that case, I kind of used it for you. Um, do you ever, do you use it? Uh, I, th I think that we did a little bit of tweaking um where like we had changed something and then we had, like we ended up going and adding something in or change tweaking one of the colors a little bit because it was being weird after that um like after we got it set up we noticed that like on one on one screen something was being weird and changed a color and i think that's the only thing we've really done in it okay um because I, I, I guess I wonder how, um, how librarians like using it and if there could be any ways I could improve it um, th that would be helpful uh, for y'all. Yeah, and I don't, we don't use it. All my um, CSS is in the system preference for CSS and it's a big old mess. So <laughs> um, I might need to look into to getting it set up. Yeah, and uh, Jason, if you have ideas for, for things that could be added, I'd, I'd love to hear them. Do you think it'd be worth maybe pulling Koha US list or the Koha general list? Um, you know, just kind of sending that question out into the big wide world and seeing what feedback comes back. Yeah, and I think even plug like using that to plug this this special interest group might be good, just so that people understand. Hey, that's kind of the direction this 
this SIG is going is trying to get your feedback on that kind of stuff. Cool. I'll take notes slash have been taking notes so I can uh, reply to the announcement post and all that good stuff. Sounds good. I'm just looking a little bit at the settings, although we're still on like 1.039 or something. Not we have we don't have the updated version. Just looking at the um, one that we have. I like that you know. For me, I feel like it's very easy to use. It's got you know, you can select the background. You don't have to like do CSS yourself. You know, it, but I'm also someone who's comfortable doing CSS, so I'm not probably the best person to be like, I think this is easy to use because I have a higher comfort level than a lot of people. Yeah, and if you are at that level, it is sometimes a lot nicer to just go right to your own CSS. It's, you're not stuck in, in that box. So, um, but uh, recently in that update, we've also added uh, JavaScript hooks to uh, to Galadriel, so now I can also do jQuery stuff, <laughs> which is cool. I'm just looking. I, I'm also looking at the blog post from the um, that you mentioned about highlighting the digital resources, and um, that also looks easy to set up. Yeah. Um, so do we want to move on to, uh, I see we have new, new bugs or enhancements from Bugzilla, um, related to web development. Does Margaret, do you have bugs that you would like to discuss? Well, I see we've got uh, another guest from Lewistown library. Hello, sorry, I'm late. Okay. I mistakenly put the time down for an hour later. I don't think I, I don't. This is Bonnie Gardner, by the way, from Lewiston Library. I just realized that my name's not up there, but my library is. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. So, uh, would it behoove us to reintroduce ourselves or are you good with all the names on the screen? I think I'm good with all the names. Um, well, Lucas and I have been chatting about a couple series of bugs and it's making me feel passionate because I can picture the quantity of support tickets uh, that might come in from these changes. So uh, I'm really curious what the feedback is from libraries, other support companies, our partners, um, regarding the movement of, we've got the OPAC nav right, which has been moved to news. And there's other bugs currently in the mill to move more of those uh, OPAC regional HTML preferences into news. Um, and I have feelings about that, but I'm wondering what everyone else's feelings are. Um, if you've been tracking those, Lucas, I think you'll know the bug numbers off the top of your head more than I will. Um, I don't them off the top of my head, but I will look for them. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I like about them is that it makes it easier for people to edit visually, like especially once it's already set up, they can go in and use the visual editor that's part of news which I don't believe is part of the um, HTML preferences. Although I know there's been some nicing up to some of the HTML preferences in the system preferences. Um, but like once something's set up, it's easy for some, easier for someone else to go in and make changes, which is kind of nice because like, so Bonnie and I are part of the same consortium. Um, we're the two people most comfortable with Koha. A lot of the other people are like, they don't want to go into any of those like JS system preferences, any of the HTML system preferences, um, because 
they're afraid they're going to mess something up, which like, especially with the JS, we have a lot. I think we still have 800 lines after I cut out almost two thirds of it last year. Oh. Yeah. So there's a lot um, in our, on our staff side. Um, and so if it gets messed up, we get lots of complaints. Like when for leap year, we had a leap day, we had a problem with our holds and some of our jQuery got disabled to, so that people could place holds. Um, but some of the jQuery after that also got messed up or disabled. And Bonnie got an email from like her Saturday crew that was like, all these things are broken. Why didn't you tell me this was happening? Cause it was all jQuery stuff. It wasn't that it was like updating and changing. The jQuery just broke temporarily. It was fine on Monday. Um, and so being able to like make it easier for people to go in and edit it and have the confidence, confidence to edit it without worrying they're going to mess up a different thing or whatever because they don't know HTML. They don't know how to, what they need to change to make little changes. Um, yeah, it definitely does lower the bar. So um, makes it easier for some to edit those HTML preferences. Um, though, just to note, um, it, it should be only the HTML preferences that will be changed to the new yeah. block, not the, uh, not the, the uh, user JSs. Yes. I guess one, one thing that is sort of concerning to me is when does it stop becoming news and start becoming something else? Like, there is exactly. A, <laughs> yeah. There is a bug to call it, to, to rename the news feature that I saw recently. Uh, Lucas, if you've got some of those numbers, do you want to throw them up in the chat? Sure. Um, some of these are in different uh, statuses. Um, this 22880 is the OPAC header, um, which has been pushed to master. This 24387 is about um, renaming the news tool. Um, this is 23794, we'll add the uh, OPAC main user block. Um, I don't know if we need to necessarily go and grab every single one of these, but there is a bug for almost every um, one of the HTML system preferences. Are they at least all referencing each other in Bugzilla? Like yes. also see? Uh, I think, I believe they are. Okay. Um, there's a couple other sort of related bugs. Um, that I'll point out. 24764. Um, that uh, WYSIWYG editor um, that Lisa was speaking about actually does some automatic code cleanup. So it would be nice if we turn that off. It, if you write HTML, it, um, it uh, kind of tells you what is wrong and what is right and it will automatically update your HTML. So, um, which is a bit frustrating and shouldn't happen. Um, 
Mm -hmm. That's one of those, I see so many support tickets coming in for, I put in this HTML, my HTML editor says it's just fine. Why is Koha not letting me use it or something like that? Um, or taking existing one that's kind of broken but works and really making it not work anymore. Because all the OPAC nav write content was moved over in 1905, 05, uh, 1905 rather. Um, and we ran into not an insignificant number of those. And I can only imagine OPAC nav write is not the most popular, wasn't the most popular system preference for putting stuff on the left hand side of your page. Uh, the OPAC header is actually rather popular for putting stuff on your page, uh, usually kind of important information. And it, it makes me uncomfortable thinking about how many tickets we'll get uh, of grading partners to that. Um, we're just uncomfortable for the partners themselves. A few libraries don't always look at their OPAC every day. So that could be a long drawn out Mm, business. So, and I'm also going to throw in 22660, um, which is the idea of um, maybe adding code mirror um, alongside um, tiny MCE, which is the WYSIWYG editor. Um, so you can have the choice between both. Um, as code mirror is a little bit more robust for those of us who actually um, just want to write our own HTML and use classes and stuff like that. Yeah, that would definitely be helpful so that like those of us who can and want to do our own HTML can, but the people who just want a visual editor, will they go in and, you know, add a new message somewhere or something? can do that. For my part, I'm not in Bugzilla probably nearly as much as the rest of you all on a day-to-day -day basis. And having all of these moving parts, but not necessarily a spoke for, uh, or a center of the wheel for all these different spokes is, eh, feels a little sloppy. Um, hard to keep track of, and Lucas and I were talking about an omnibus bug that says, all right, here's all the moving parts. Here's what they're trying to do. We've got omnibus bugs for other large projects like retooling accounting and fines, uh, amongst other things, and I think it would be good organization to have something similar here, and we can act map out all the good that we're doing from this and daily come to some consensus, especially on the like renaming news now that it's not just news. Um, and I think this kind of content creation or user interface management needs to have its own pedestal amongst admin tools. Like, Sticking it in the back corner of news under miscellaneous or tools under miscellaneous does not denote how important it is to customize the visual interface that's presented to your patrons. And then we're inevitably going to talk about the staff clients and self checkout, right? Because it's got those complementary um, design system preferences for that too. Um, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Just Based solely on looking at my news right now, it's just flooded with um, things that people have appended to the ends of slips. So that stuff's all going to get lost in between each other. And it does seem like they should be two different things. Yeah. Oh, that's a real good point. Because some people keep their news history for a long time. And then if you want to go update, like, I need to update my header. What, how many pages back is that? Yikes. Uh. I don't think there's great searching on that. 
you know, like some places you can search or filter. Yeah, it's got the da data table filter oh, it search does. Okay. thing up at the top. Yeah, so I, I agree, Jason, This there should be two separate sections for these HTML preferences and the news should be kept separate. Yeah, and I mean, I think the format is fine. So if you're just like duplicating what the news does into a separate section, I think that's fine. It's just having them mixed together is a little cumbersome. Okay. Um, any other uh, bugs, enhancements, possible bugs that anybody would like to speak of? Um, I'm not 100% sure that this is web dev, but like, uh, we've been looking a lot at, we've been using, switching to using purchase suggestions for all our patron suggestions, and we've done a lot of edit, <laughs> or are in the process of doing a bunch of jQuery to edit that screen like hiding fields that we're not using for the patrons or like that only the staff need to see like we don't want patrons putting in ISBN numbers because it might not be the right version that you know they might have an ISBN number that's not the version that we're going to get or whatever um oh actually that's probably not the right one that was adding so being able to like do some of that customization for patrons on the patron uh, side at least okay you're talking about the patient maybe maybe both sides the suggestions on the staff side and yeah patient side. um uh if if you look at like uh um self-registration or, or or just the regular registration there are system preferences for um borrower um, mandatory fields and also for uh borrower unwanted fields so maybe it sounds like something similar in like a suggestions <laughs> unwanted fields which is bug two three four two zero yeah i put it in last summer i've been putting in a lot of purchase suggestion bugs maybe i should make a purchase suggestion omnibus actually because there's a lot that are somewhat interconnected some of them rely on other stuff Mm -hmm. that's not pushed yet. I mean, so not all bugs that I've put in, but some other ones. A lot of the bugs I've put in are uh, purchase suggestion related. I'm going to assign that 23420 two, to myself, Lisa, and uh, as a reminder to take a look into this. <laughs> cool. Thank you. OK. 
Okay, any, uh, anything else? Anything that should be a bug that isn't yet? Nope. I bet there are things, but I'm definitely blinking, so. Yeah. We'll repeat that item next month so next month. everyone can think of a few more to add. Um, so let's see, last thing we have on the agenda is how do I? Um, questions about Koha display. Um, Margaret wrote, think jQuery shortcuts, system pref wizardry, et cetera. Margaret, do you have ideas here? Uh, honestly, no, because I usually just ask you to do it <laughs> when uh, I need any of those things. But I know you've been kind of curating a list of frequently asked questions, uh, jQuery questions to specify. Um, and we've got the jQuery library. Cool, cool. Uh, but like, are there any that, um, you think people ask very often, probably should be more widely known, or oh. you're asking me. Yeah. Um, well, uh, going back to where we kicked off with uh, the online resources, like styling that link is something that has always been asked for. That is a, one of the reasons it's been put in Galadriel. Um, So when people have online resources um, in plain vanilla, out of the box, go high, it's just a link at the bottom, right? But people want to buttonify yeah, uh, it or draw the, more attention the to complaint it. complaint from the OPAC is usually that um, it doesn't stand out very much um, or at all. Um, so when you're paging through results, um, it's sometimes hard to tell if something is an online resource or maybe a regular physical thing. So just even something really simple as uh, like making that a bigger font is helpful. Um, but often I see folks asking it to be, you know, a button um, that really kind of stands out on the page. Um, so we know that that's something you can access online just by clicking. <laughs> Um, other things, especially recently, um, there's a lot of jQuery that's been done revolving around self-registration, um, and, and various things there. Um, so there's a potential video or blog post. Do you think the self-registration area has been getting much love from the COA community? Sounds like you've been doing a lot of work on that, so that would imply there's room for improvement. Um, yeah, good point. Um, I, I think maybe a lot of these little jQuery tricks that we're doing could be implemented into COHA um, instead. I will say it's a little bit uh, gray area ish when if you just pop it open and you get the default things that show up which is not the full list of um, borrower fields um, but then you have to either make it mandatory or you have to say it's unwanted as opposed to it doesn't have to be mandatory but we do want to show this on the page once then it seems like we have to employ jQuery to get it in there or do something um, yeah, um, I know our partners would just like to be able to do it themselves. Like, I need to add this new thing because our outreach librarian said blah and just go in there and do it. Um, what I'm seeing a lot of is uh, uh, it, 
if you don't make card number mandatory, um, Koha generates it itself, and that can sometimes depend on the, what system preferences you have turned on or off. Um, but I, I find myself often making that field required through system preferences, hiding it with CSS, and then using JavaScript to maybe take a combination of like the first name and last name and populating that hidden field um, before you submit the form to get um, folks the, the, the card number. That, that sounds like way too much work. Um, so maybe that's something that we could think of addressing in Koha. jQuery is never the, the best way to, 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 to hack these things sometimes. Um, I guess what I'd like to see is just like a list of some things like this that people would want to see um, uh, put into some sort of tutorial form, whether that be a video or uh, uh, a blog post or, or, or any other medium. Um, that will be helpful for librarians when they're setting up these various aspects of Koha. And uh, that's all we got, I guess, for today. I was looking at the bookzilla and I'm actually a little surprised at how few like new self-registration bugs there are as more people are using it and using it more heavily. Like we were using it before, but we weren't giving people an auto card number. Um, we were just making them come in, letting them place a couple holds and then making them come in. Um, I think a lot of what's happening now is because of the situation in the world, people want self-registration and they want certain things to work like right now. So uh, it, uh, there's no time for uh, a bug to go through the community and be pushed to a version in six months. Um, when they don't need this as much. So I think maybe that's why, I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put in a bug about, we use jQuery to put like a thing at the top of the form that's like, please don't make an account if you already have a Valnet card. Please uh, take note of your card number on the next page. Cause like we can do that and it wasn't too hard. I'm sure there are people who aren't comfortable enough with jQuery to put a note at the beginning of the form. No, absolutely. And that's, a, that's a great idea. That could be a H, very similar to any other HTML system preference that we already have um, to just display some additional information at the top of the form. And then it will eventually get shoved into the news feature. Correct. <laughs> or if they're just adding it, they might put it in the news feature. Yeah. Since they know right. they're moving things over and then get pushed into a new separate copy of the news feature that's actually these HTML content things, mm -hmm. hopefully. <laughs> but uh, the notice at the top of the page with instructions and also um, having like terms and conditions, what's our privacy and circulation policies and stuff. I see those on different um, library registration pages and they need to include that in the bottom and you need to click yes I accept these all that kind of stuff which I think we're mostly handling in jQuery now jQuery plus um, patron attribute yes no thing which is functional 
somewhat inelegant. I have heard of one library that does have the Topaz signature pads and they ask um, patrons to sign that and then they have the PDF of their signature. That's impressive. <laughs> E-signing might be a little bit more convenient though, I think. Yeah. Speaking of self-registration, is there a way to have the auto-filled password pull from one of the other fields that they fill out? Because for us, when, when we're making library cards, the default password for the patron is And that is how we instruct them to log into all of our digital resources. But the auto registration gives them a password so yeah. that all of the auto registration people, the instructions that we give don't apply to them anymore. <laughs> so it's confusing for them. So that's something that I've done a couple times lately with jQuery as well, very similar to what I was just explaining mm -hmm. with the card number, um, same idea. Um, you make the password field fields. There's two of them. There's a password and a password confirm um, mandatory. Um, and then uh, you hide them with CSS and then you can use jQuery to grab, uh, you know, the last four of a phone number or whatever other field you'd want, which you also want to make required. So they fill it out um, and make that the password. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you'd like, I can, um, I can get you that, that jQuery. It's really pretty That simple. would be great. That would be great. Yeah, and I'd feel better if that was something libraries could configure themselves rather than asking us to do that. And ideally that would give it a little bit more room to be more secure. You know, this, these aren't bank accounts, but it would be better the more library password behavior follows the security expectations of other things in 2020. Like either having yeah. a secret token, two-factor authentication, all these things are going to be more in demand by patrons in hopefully not the too distant future. Yeah, we did finally last year turn on patrons can change their passwords now. So we set the default to that, but we turned on that now patrons can change their passwords, which was like last, the previous time I brought it up, all the schools were like, no, everyone will change their passwords and it'll be a huge problem. Um, but we were having some trouble with something. I don't even remember what the problem was. And I was like, we just need to make this an option. And I, then I also was like, and maybe in the future, you know, Koha has abilities or has settings now where you can require more strict passwords. And I'm kind of hoping that maybe eventually we can move more towards that for patron security. And I figured this was a good first step. Good work getting that mountain to move. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think libraries are an excellent target of social engineering to exploit people or commit identity theft and just not talked about it enough or targeted enough. And that's why we've been able to like skirt by with your pins, the last four of your phone number that you have just read aloud to everyone at the circulation desk of strangers all around you. Uh, yeah. We have people who like will loudly read out their credit card number on the phones in the library. Or on the bus or just walking around. Yeah, n n no. Yeah. No. Especially the places that ask for driver's licenses as part of registration, which some libraries still do. Yeah. 
I feel your pain. Yeah. <laughs> we have this whole local control thing here where if they want to do it, they have to be able to do it, but we strongly discourage it. I put in bug 25100 for adding custom text to the top of the self-registration form. Say that number again. Uh, 25100. Thank you. And then I feel like we also talked about adding another one and I forgot. I'll get my notes kind of organized and add it to the um, email chain and we'll have this video to <laughs> remember what we talked about uh, once Jason posts it so you can spread that around um, to the people who weren't able to come today and then you know address some of those other talking points really glad for recording this one we've covered a lot of topics any final thoughts This was really useful, and I hope we keep it up. Yeah. On that note, I believe the next meeting would be May 14th, second Thursday of the month. Yeah, second Thursday of the month would be May 14th. Same time. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I, I just set it up as a recurring event on the Qua US calendar, so it'll be there forever until we kill it. So. Awesome. I'll be on time this time. <laughs>